Cooperation is, is absolutely essential. Sharing of expertise, um, training, capacity building, uh, sharing of data and, and knowledge, those are all essential. I think one of the advantages that China has is that policy making in China seems to be well connected to the science uh, and also to technical uh, input. You know, we see the Chinese Academy of Sciences is influential. That's not the case in many countries around the world. Um, China has a, a good record with protected areas, um, etc. So, uh, and, and of course, this idea of ecological civilization. Um, I'm really hoping that um, you know China can be an example to the rest of the world and say we must put aside uh, areas of nature um, to provide us with ecological services uh, and also to to protect and conserve biodiversity. So I, I think China is in a perfect position to show leadership uh, on this, this issue. We have many plant species that are down to very few individuals left. Um, they are about to become extinct. Um, and China has run programs um, uh, on the conservation of plant species with extremely small populations, which is a systematic approach to conserving plants, prioritizing the most threatened species first. And we've seen, um, I think, you know, multiple uh, institutions and agencies engaged in that species conservation work. And um, it's great to see um, uh, Chinese partners um, and institutions trying to protect every plant species. My ideal picture is that globally we agree to uh, ambitious measurable targets uh, and that in a decade's time we show that we have met those targets. That would be a first for biodiversity. I really hope, as I say, that um, you know, at COP15 that we see governments with ambitious targets and goals for, for biodiversity. You might describe it as a race to the top and what I hope for uh, as I say, is that we will see real leadership from our political leaders at COP15 that will reverse that, that trend of biodiversity loss.